Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us here today. I'm pleased to be joined by my colleague, Dr. Merrily Fullerton, the Minister of Long-Term Care. I want to begin today by thanking all of those unsung heroes who have stepped up since day one, those ordinary women and men who have been anything but ordinary, to the half a million construction workers building essential projects, the truck drivers, grocery store clerks, farm workers, cashiers, education assistants, to our healthcare workers, we thank you and owe you a debt of gratitude. Because of you, families have had food on their tables and roofs over their heads. Personal support workers, PSWs, have been true heroes during this time. They have demonstrated dedication and commitment above and beyond their duty. It is clear we need even more of them in Ontario. In the fall, I announced uh, funding for PSW training in communities like Niagara and Sudbury. Building on those programs, I'm pleased to share our latest additional investment across our province. In North Bay, Lanark and Renfrew, Hamilton, Ottawa, the Greater Toronto Area, Kitchener, London and Burlington. Today, we are announcing that our government is investing more than $4.1 million in training and resources for PSWs. This means nearly 400 new PSWs will be trained and ready to care for residents in long-term care homes. For those looking for meaningful careers, we're giving you a hand up to get started. We're also providing PSWs with new resources to support them in their work and help keep them and their families healthy and strong. Today's funding will support projects like Care Plus, led by St. Michael's Hospital in Toronto. Care Plus is a toolkit to support PSWs. It includes infection prevention information and wellness resources. My ministry will continue to promote innovative programs that will help people find meaningful jobs to sustain them and their families long after COVID-19 is through. I want to give you an example of how training programs like the ones we're announcing today spread hope by connecting people with a rewarding career such as those as PSWs. I want to tell you about Roger. He is someone who had long careers in both the culinary and automotive fields but was laid off in 2019. With the help of the second career program, he was able to retrain as a PSW and graduated this year. Roger is now in a high demand field. As a man, he feels he can offer a greater sense of comfort to male patients in particular, as well as others needing care. It may be tough to imagine right now, but someday this virus will be behind us. While we wait for that day to come, we must make sure our loved ones, especially those in long-term care homes, are well cared for and safe. I'd now like to turn it over to my colleague, Dr. Fullerton. Thank you, Minister McNaughton. So it is a pleasure to be here today uh, to join you for this important announcement. Personal support workers are the backbone of long-term care, and they carry out critical and compassionate work every single day to ensure that our loved ones receive the quality of care that they need and deserve. Modernizing long-term care means making it a better place for residents to live and a better place for staff to work. An important part of building a 21st century long-term care sector is ensuring that there are appropriate levels of well-trained staff to support and care for our loved ones, and that we are continually building capacity for the future. Today's announcement of $4.1 million to help train 373 new personal support workers is possible because of coordinated partnerships and programs across government. In December, we announced a historic long-term care staffing plan. And when fully implemented, our plan will make Ontario a leader in Canada by providing residents with an average of four hours a day of direct care per resident. The program we are announcing today supports the training of PSWs in regions of the province that have been hardest hit by the pandemic, such as Ottawa 
and the Greater Toronto Area. As noted by Minister McNaughton, this investment will help more people move into a rewarding career as a PSW through the Skills Advance Ontario program and the Canada Ontario Job Grant. And later this week, we will have much more to say about our plans to increase the number of PSWs across this province. Being a personal support worker is meaningful and rewarding and critical work. And when we talk about our frontline healthcare heroes, PSWs figure prominently among that distinguished group. Residents and their families repeatedly express how important P uh, PSWs are to them and their families. And during my years as a family physician, I cared for many residents and families, and I know the peace of mind that PSWs bring to families and residents. They are integral in the care provided in our long-term care homes and our residents. More than 120,000 PSWs work in Ontario today, including 50,000 in the long-term care sector. But the need for them is greater than it has ever been, especially as we begin adding more direct care for a growing seniors population. To those of you who may be considering training as a personal support worker. Whether it's your first career, your second, or even your third, I strongly encourage you to apply. We need you, and our loved ones need you. It's an opportunity to make a real difference in the lives of vulnerable people. What our PSWs do matters. And I am so grateful for all of the work that our frontline healthcare heroes do each and every day. You work tirelessly, providing people with the support that they need. Your determination, commitment, and your compassion is truly inspiring. Together, we will address the long-standing staffing challenges that have impacted the long-term care sector for decades. And together, we will make long-term care a better place to live and a better place for staff to work. Thank you. We'll go to the phones for questions. First question, please. Your first question comes from Jessica Smith with Queen's Park Briefing. Please go ahead. Hi, good morning. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, ideally, both ministers could weigh in. The information before the Long-Term Care Commission makes it clear that the government was quite aware of the staffing shortages in long-term care as of the first wave. So why didn't Ontario undertake to hire and train thousands of personal support workers over the summer to do something like that? Well, you know, that's an important question. And we've had really three phases to, uh, uh, with the ministry action on staffing. And the first was an emergency response. The second was a stabilization. And this is part of the long-term care, uh, uh, the longer-term response in long-term care. But if we look at areas, uh, you know, jurisdictions like Quebec, uh, it's not simply a matter of, of finding the workers. It's also retaining them. And so that's why our staffing plan, A Better Place to Live, A Better Place to Work, is not only about uh, providing uh, the opportunity, uh, and uh, as we've said, 27,000 is what we need um, as we move forward to 24, 25, and that's our goal. But ultimately, we can train, but we have to retain. And, uh, and I think the experience of Quebec has shown um, that, uh, first of all, you have to find um, the workers, and then you have to retain them. And uh, I think our, our ability to provide the support to long-term care homes um, during, the, um, during the pandemic uh, was a whole different level of, of response. Um, but the longer term is absolutely critical. So we need to understand the mechanisms that will help retain the workers, and that's why there are many aspects uh, um, to, this, to this plan. Thank you. Follow-up? That actually brings me to what my follow-up is going to be. Uh, can you elaborate on any plans to improve working conditions for PSWs in long-term care to help with retention 
Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, if we look at really the capacity issue that we had leading into this, you know, many years of neglect behind um, redesigning and redeveloping um, older homes and also building new capacity. And uh, we can see that the newer homes uh, did much better in the, uh, on average um, than the older homes. So the age of the home is a factor for the outbreak. We need to be providing an environment with, within which PSWs can feel valued. Uh, and so that we can also talk about the, um, the temporary wage increase, uh, making sure that they have the right physical uh, uh, infrastructure to work in. Then we look at the innovation, uh, the potential for um, micro-credentialing, more teamwork, um, and, uh, and also, uh, we have to speak of the accountability and the leadership and the government governance in homes. And so all of this, um, so I, I want PSWs to know they really are part of a team, um, that this is very meaningful work, and that they are supported um, in this. But it's going to take all of those things uh, um, to, to make long-term care better. Next question. Your next question comes from Mark Pear with 570 News Kitchener. Please go ahead. Good morning, everybody. Um, I don't know who uh, would be, be able to answer this, whether, whichever one of you, of course. Um, I was wondering if you could maybe uh, go into specifics about uh, some of the funding as it pertains to the uh, Kitchener-Waterloo area. Yeah, thank you uh, so much. We're really excited about uh, this program. This is obviously a one step to recruit uh, more people uh, to become PSWs. Uh, there's eight projects that we're announcing today, including uh, in the Kitchener area, nearly 400 uh, new PSWs. Uh, this uh, programming will uh, upskill uh, many workers as well as uh, train new workers to become uh, PSWs. The uh, program uh, length, uh, in some cases, it, it's 20 weeks to upskill workers uh, or 40 weeks uh, to make uh, new workers become uh, PSWs. So we're, we're really excited about this. Uh, obviously, as Dr. Fullerton mentioned, we uh, inherited a severe shortage of PSWs uh, in this province, but this is one step that we're taking over $4 million to partner with employers and the federal government to attract uh, more people into meaningful jobs like PSWs. Follow up. Is this something that's uh, being done in, uh, in with, uh, I guess, like Conestoga College, for example? I'm just looking at the press release here and I'm seeing some of the other uh, jurisdictions that are working with, uh, I guess, Canada College, for example. Mohawk College is also named in here. Yeah, in uh, Kitchener specifically, uh, we're working with uh, Paramed to uh, hire um, uh, 60 uh, students to become PSWs and, and to prepare uh, those students uh, in the local community. Uh, there are so many opportunities uh, in uh, the field of healthcare, uh, not just because of uh, COVID-19, but even uh, before. And we know uh, as we come out of COVID-19, there are going to be uh, many meaningful uh, career opportunities uh, available. That's why our government is working uh, right across different ministries to uh, prepare students uh, for exciting and meaningful careers uh, as PSWs. Next question. Your next question comes from Colin DeMello with CTV News. Please go ahead. Hi, good morning. My question is for Minister Fullerton. Um, Minister, I'm just wondering about the vaccine rollout when it comes to long-term care. Has everyone who wanted to receive a vaccine received that vaccine now? Um, where are we in that uh, grand scheme of things? Yes, well, I'm I am not the spokesperson for the vaccine distribution table, but I will tell you that our long-term care homes across Ontario have uh, been offered the vaccine, and we've had a good uptake with the residents uh, and the staff have, have also been uh, been offered. But this will be ongoing to make sure that the second doses uh, are are uh, fully reached, and uh, this is an ongoing effort. Thank you. Follow up. Do you feel now? Thank you. How confident do you feel now, Minister, that uh, at least? if the vast majority of those in long-term care have received their vaccine, their first dose, that the province has an adequate amount of protection for those in long-term care? You know, I, that's a really important question because if you look at the numbers after we began um, the vaccinations, the numbers of resident cases began to drop. And, uh, and, and that's, it, it really is a dramatic graph to look at. So what took five months um, to reach a peak once we started those vaccines? Uh, into the arms of residents and staff, um, the, the drop is quite dramatic um, and the benefit of those first vaccines is very clear. Um, so I th I'm very hopeful. Uh, we have to be vigilant. We have to continue. Uh, COVID-19 has demonstrated uh, what a chameleon it is 
uh, and what a challenge it is. So we just have to keep at this um, and not, uh, not stop for any reason. Um, keep at the vaccinations, keep at the rapid testing, uh, keep at the surveillance testing, uh, and continue to support our homes. Next question. Your next question comes from Natasha McDonald with Radio Canada. Please go ahead. Hi, this is a question for both, I guess, um, both ministers. Uh, we heard at the uh, Long-Term Care Commission that there is a critical shortage of francophone PSWs specifically. Uh, we know that this has direct negative impacts on the francophone residents. So I'm wondering how many of the 373 new PSWs will be trained in French. So thanks for the question. And I think uh, I just want to comment how important it is for, uh, um, for us to acknowledge that... Um, that, that aspect. Uh, the language is important for people who are in long-term care homes and I'm coming from Ottawa where we're right across the border from from uh, Gatineau and Quebec and so obviously there's, there's a big demand. Um, so there is a program um, in Ottawa, several of them now, and uh, I feel that uh, that this is an area that will be addressed and we'll continue to, to uh, make sure that we keep that as a lens, the, the francophone lens. So I appreciate your question. Thank you. Follow up? Okay, so if I understand correctly, none of the 373 will be trained in French. So is there a plan to address this in the future? Um, and if so, when and how? I'll pass that to my colleague. Yeah, thank you uh, so much. Um, I referenced uh, a training program that we uh, introduced late last year to train PSWs uh, in Sudbury uh, and Niagara. Many of those 115 uh, PSWs uh, specifically in those two regions um, will be trained um, in, in francophone. There's francophone training uh, for them. We know that there's a, a shortage. Uh, I can tell you one of the uh, focuses of our second career program that we redesigned and relaunched uh, in December has a focus on a PSW uh, training, specifically uh, francophone PSWs. This is a, a huge priority uh, for our government and we're going to continue to ensure that we're funding uh, projects to train francophone PSWs. Next question. Your next question comes from Allison Smith with Queen's Park Today. Please go ahead. Hi, Ministers. Uh, last fall, you guys launched uh, a program to recruit resident support aides. Um, and uh, I guess unlike these LTC programs, that training programs that you're detailing today, those programs only required workers to go through some online portals and, uh, I guess, learn the ropes that way, uh, yet they were going to be doing uh, tasks sort of similar to uh, what PSWs do, like feeding uh, residents and, and changing linens. I wonder if you could give us an update on how many people have gone through this online program and whether or not there, there are people from that working at homes now. So thanks for the question. Yeah, our resident support aides, that was part of our, uh, you know, the staffing stabilization plan and the, and the fall preparedness plan as we, as we learned from the lessons in the, in the first wave. This has been a, an ongoing uh, learning process. And so they were intended to uh, not to necessarily be, um, uh, you know, the longer term plan. Obviously it was the PSWs uh, and the RNs and the RPNs. And this is something that came out in Justice Galise's report. Uh, so the resident support aides are, are, are out and helping, uh, and this is very positive. I think all of these uh, pieces are part of the, the solution. Uh, but the longer term plan is the 27,000 new positions um, and PSWs, RNs, and RPNs. And uh, this is an active, ongoing effort because 27,000 uh, will be needed over the next few years. And we've got hard targets for that, and we'll be measuring that to make sure that we meet those targets. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pleased with the re response that we got for the resident support aides, um, and that was part of the, the solution. Um, there were hundreds that, uh, that came through that program. And again, during a pandemic, when you have to train people, you have to be innovative, you have to find ways to support the, the teams that are already in the homes, uh, and the RSAs were part of that solution. Thank you. Follow-up? So are the RSAs uh, receiving the top-up funding that you guys are providing to long-term care workers? And will there be any paths for them to enter these type of training programs that you detailed today? 
You know, that's a really good question. And what we've seen is the career laddering um, is part of the solution to making sure that we uh, allow um, staff in the long-term care sector to see the positions that they might be able to move to um, so that we don't lose them to other sectors. So if there are training programs that are opening up, there's no reason why a resident support aide uh, could not be part of a, a newer training program if that's what they, they wanted to do. Last question. Your final question comes from Heather Wright with The Independent. Please go ahead. Good morning, Ministers. Um, Minister Fullerton, you said earlier in the announcement that there were 27,000 PSWs needed, but there was a report from the Ontario Health Coalition that says 80,000 were needed. Could you explain that, the difference? Well, you know, I think, you know, it also goes back to how many, um, we've seen the FAO report about how many spaces uh, we need. We have a commitment from our government for 15,000 new long-term care spaces in five years and 30,000 in 10 years. And of course, we'll need the staff for that. Uh, we also need to be understanding the, the needs of an aging population and how we can help people stay at home longer. And that's why we had the community paramedicine program um, to be an integrated response to helping people uh, be maintained in their home where most most people actually want to be. Uh, so the growing population is something that many governments have known uh, over the last decades and our government is really the first to, to respond to that in a meaningful way, not only with innovation like the Community Paramedicine Program which has been very, very well received across uh, uh, the various locations in Ontario, but also to understand the staffing crises uh, that was uh, in Ontario before the COVID hit. So we're going to need the capacity, we're going to need the staffing, we're going to need innovative programs, we're going to need to retain the workers that we do create, and I think that that level of retention is going to go a long way uh, to making sure that we are able to provide the care that we, we need to provide. Thank you. Follow-up? Minister, considering the crisis that you just outlined, do you, um, are you lowballing your estimate for 27,000? Because, you know, there are reports out that say 80. Well, I think there, you know, it depends on how, you know, what you're reporting on. 27,000 um, would allow us to get to four hours of direct care on average per resident per day, um, which is, would, would, would make Ontario a leader in Canada. And, you know, the residents are increasingly um, with high acuity, high needs. And so this is something that obviously needs to be done. Um, there's been many reports over the years on this, and our government is the first to address this. So will it be enough? I think it's going to take all the different measures that we're, we're doing right now, whether it's um, you know, the capacity building, the home programs, the community paramedicine programs, day programs, respite care. Uh, there's going to be, have to be many, many different solutions, and uh, um, we'll, 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 we will uh, get to the 27,000 with our hard targets. That's our commitment, the four hours of direct care on average per day per resident. Thank you, everyone.